Welcome to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Today I've got an excellent show. My guest is Ken Kendall. Ken is a uh, CFP, a CLU, and an excellent financial planner in the DFW area. He's actually out of Flower Mound. I've known Ken for a number of years now, and I'm really thankful that I have. He's one of those guys that uh, the more you know, the more you like. He's been a financial planner for over 45 years, and to me, that's tremendous value to any of his clients. I know that as many throughout uh, Texas and probably throughout the, the U.S. that he works with, and the fact is, is that he's someone that I've grown to really care for as a friend, and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, if you started this back when, um, I always like to say for, for some people watching, it's like when the earth cooled, you know, <laughs> for us that were back there when we had black and white TV. Um, what got you started? I mean, what's your story? Oh, I wish I could say that I had this revelation and the heavens opened up and God came down and told me what to do. Actually, I grew up in a real conservative home. I was the oldest of seven kids. And when I was about nine or ten, my dad went into the insurance business. And so I began to appreciate the value of insurance and the value of getting paid for what you do and commission kind of a thing. And uh, so while I was in college, I was, I was going to get married after my sophomore year. And we just got talking about what am I going to do and decided, well, let me go ahead and get licensed and try to sell insurance. And really fell in love with the business. And so rather than become a football, teach and a biology, football coach and a biology teacher like I thought I was going to, I decided to make a career out of this. And it's just uh, been a, a real uh, fun journey now for 45 years. Now, <clears throat> CFP, CLU are designations. Right. Uh, for, for me, they say you have a clue in the financial realm. But for you and people in your industry, what does it mean to be a CFP or CLU? Well, they would be kind of uh, like a master's degree, sort of. CLU is Chartered Life Underwriter. It's really more insurance, tax, financial, estate planning oriented. CFP is Certified Financial Planner, and that's a much more broad. It does look at insurance, looks at investments, looks at, uh, again, taxation, um, estate, um, uh, legal documents that have to do with your, your estate planning and so on. And so it's just... It's just, a, I mean, you, you could know everything you need to know without having the designation. The designation just kind of are testament to the fact that you know what you're talking about. It, like having a master's or a doctorate or whatever in a certain field, right. it gives that validation to the rest of the universe. Yes, you know what you're talking about. Right. But the other thing that I know about those curriculums, having had some background in it in a previous life, <laughs> the, uh, the thing that was so amazing uh, about them is that they're, they're really, they help you become a risk assessment expert. Does that make sense? Sure. Now, is that, do you see that or do you, how would you describe that? No, I think that's a, I think that's a good analogy. Um, a, lot of, a lot of financial decisions are really assessing risk. You know, there is no such thing as no risk. Right. And so you have to learn what risks you're trying to mitigate, which risk you're trying to, you know, take on yourself. And that's true not only in insurance, but in financial planning and and investment planning and everything, really. It's, there's, there are always risks and trade-offs and so on. Well, I think a lot of the, that whole <laughs> realm, isn't it, is, is designed around um, the litigious world we live in and the, the potentials for uh, taxation and tax change and what's available now and how can you position yourself the best for all those situations. Isn't that a, a big part of what makes room for the financial planner? Sure. in a person's uh, future? Yeah, I think a lot of people have come to realize over the years that it's, it's really not a do-it-yourself project. There are so many things that can impact a decision here, can have an impact over here. And, and so that's part of what we do is have people take a much broader look at, at uh, their overall situation. What would you say has been one of the most satisfying moments in the last 45 years that really is the, the thing that recharges you in keeping you going in what you're doing? Well, if I have a... If I have a client that retires and they, in review meeting, they say, you know, I couldn't have done this without the planning. Or if I've, if I've talked with a, a survivor family where someone has passed away and they've had the insurance and they've had the, the documents in place or children going off to college, partly because of the help that we were able to give mom and dad putting, money, putting the money away. I mean, those kind of things really kind of re-help you, you know, get recommitted and rebuild the passion. Now, 
Um, in any kind of uh, <clears throat> disasters type of thing, I mean, you, you, I know that, well, death is a big disaster. You don't really do any of the other kinds of insurance that does, that, like home and no, stuff No, I don't, like yeah, we don't do property and casualty or auto insurance or that sort of thing. We have other people that we refer to that do that. And when you look at, at um, the, the, the services that you bring to the table, um, what are some of the things that you are really providing to your client? Well, a lot of the people that I talk to, um, it, it really, I meet them at some point of transition. It seems like they've either lost a job and now they need to know what to do with their retirement plan or uh, they've gotten married, they have children, they bought a business, they've sold a business, they've received an inheritance. I mean, lots of things like that that sort of trigger a triggering event. Very good. Well, I, I know that, that as we move forward into this, we're going to be talking more about the, the aspects of what you're doing that's unique and special. Uh, one of the other things that we're looking forward to is that um, Ken has a group of over 4,200 business owners in the DFW area that he's at the helm of. And that will be a lot of fun to talk about. More to come. This is Pat Dewar, the Business Spotlight. We'll talk to you next time in just a few minutes, a few seconds so much. Thanks. Staying involved uh, in dentistry on every level, local, state, and national, makes me a better dentist. Our patients are our life and our livelihood, and we appreciate every single patient that walks in that door. And these are our family, and we treat them that way. I'm Pat Dewar. Welcome to another segment. Um, my guest today is Ken Kendall. We're having a, a great show on uh, financial planning, but financial planning from some, with somebody that's an expert in that area. CFP, CLU, KendallFinancial.net is uh, where you'd find him on the internet, and he's out of Flower Mound. Ken, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. I'm so excited about this segment because we're really going to be talking about what you do that's unique and special. Something that a lot of financial planners probably wouldn't do. And I know from the interactions that you have with DFW, uh, on linking together DFW and some of the other things that you do uh, with the newsletters and the speaking and other stuff, you really reach out to your community. And you've really zeroed in on the, the area near where you live. Yeah, I really tried to. We've, uh, um, most of my clients are within 15 or 20 miles. Um, uh, most uh, most of the people meet me in my office, and so you know it's got to be somewhat convenient. And then, as you referred to this networking group that we started a little over three years ago, it was really focused on a circle of about 15 miles around Flower Mound, and it's just been an interesting thing to watch how this group has taken off and grown over the last three years. How did that start? Tell that story real quick. It really was. Uh, I was just at a meeting with some other financial advisors, and we were talking about social media and all that stuff, and. And I just made the comment that I was real intrigued with LinkedIn. It seemed like there ought to be a way to use LinkedIn for business purposes, but I couldn't figure out how. And so came up with the idea of starting a local group. And, uh, and we kind of put it together and, and started talking to other people that I knew and so on. And the group really just took off from day one and it's grown and grown and grown. And now, as you mentioned, we've got over 4,300 people in the group. Um, according to the LinkedIn profiles, 40% of them are business owners and 20% are senior level executives. So, I think we've got a pretty good mix of, of people now, uh, but because we're a local group, we can have local events, so we have a couple of, of live events a month, and that, those are pretty well attended. And we just have a great time. There's just been a great camaraderie that's developed uh, among the people in this group. Well, and then I've seen you use that to, uh, uh, well, attract a lot of your clients, even, because a lot of your clients are business owners and executives that um, are trying to do the right stuff. Wouldn't you agree? Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, anybody who's in business, you know, is trying to to find the people that they can serve and the people who need their services. Um, and one of the difficult challenges anybody has in business is how do you go out and find the people that need what you've got to, to talk about? And so I think this has been a real good opportunity for people to meet other people on a pretty low-key basis and just build a relationship. And if there's something that comes out of it from a business standpoint, that's kind of a plus. 
Because for, for my business and most other businesses, it's really they're relationship driven. It's not product or it's not you know, a sale of a particular uh, item or something like that. Isn't that important, the relationship driven um, business? And what's funny is that it seems like during the, the 80s, 90s, and even parts of the 2000s, there was this you know, kind of results, 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 you know, that whole IBM, EDS mindset uh, of, of production. Everything was, was that. But now it's community and relationship. People want to know that you're there, you're real, and you're going to be around. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of things tend to cycle, and I think that's an example. You know, 30 years ago, it was all relationship, and then, as you said, it got into heavy, heavy marketing. And, but, I mean, I heard a phrase years and years ago that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, and I think there's a lot of truth in that. And so that's one of the things that I've really worked on over the years in the business is trying to let people know I really care about them and what they're trying to accomplish. And if I can help them, great, and if I can't, you know, we're not going to mess them up. Yeah. Well, one of the good things about what I see in your business model, too, is that you've placed yourself as what they call the hub for a community. You know, 4,200 people that you have access to, you're, you've got spokes out, connections, to a huge uh, umbrella of resources, people, sure. relationships. You're looking for this? Oh, that's that person. Do you do with that, a lot of that, don't you? Yeah, I really try. I'm kind of a connector by nature. And, uh, and so this group has been a good way to help formalize that. I've, I've always tried for years to introduce great people to other great people. Yeah. And, uh, well, you but, tend to attract the best people. Well, but what's so exciting about this group is that everybody has access to the group. And it's not my group. I mean, I happen to be the one that started it. But the group is everybody's group. And so no matter who you are or where you are, you can connect with other people in this group. Well, you also are the gatekeeper for it, aren't you? The gatekeeper from the standpoint that we really are, are serious about making it a local group. So if people attempt to join the group that aren't in the northern suburbs of the DFW area, we don't let them in the group because we really want to, you know, we really want to promote local business people that are in this group. That's, uh, how, how have you seen it affect the businesses that you're touching? Well, I don't have any formal way of tracking that, but I get lots of feedback from people that, um, that talk about meeting new, building new relationships, meeting new clients, having new vendors, new customers, whatever. And so, I mean, I really love hearing those kinds of stories because that's really what it's all about. Well, I think we connected through that group. I, that's how we one initially of, one, of your, one of your uh, <clears throat> friends, one of the members, uh, told me to, that I needed to know you. And so we connected via LinkedIn and we moved, you know, literally have continued to move towards this. And what's kind of fun is I'm hoping that out of the, uh, these, this video that there'll be other people in the group that'll want to uh, be on this show or be on a show that you guys create. That would be a lot of fun. And if, if you're in the DFW area, connect with Ken. At, now what's the name of the group again? Linking Together DFW North Texas. Linking Together DFW North Texas. That's a local group for if you're a business owner, you can get out there, join them. We'll be right back. Staying involved uh, in dentistry on every level, local, state, and national, makes me a better dentist. Our patients are our life and our livelihood, and. We appreciate every single patient that walks in that door. And these are our family, and we treat them that way. And welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Great show today with Ken Kendall, CFP, CLU, Kendall Financial, uh, net is his website and his company, and you need to connect with him. We've been talking about the ways that he's built community on linking together DFW, which is a LinkedIn group in the DFW area, and if you're in this area, you're a business owner or an executive, uh, you should connect. You should connect with uh, that group and Ken right away, because the fact is is that uh, if over two or 3,000 people are your ideal client, are all in one neighborhood, I'd go there. <laughs> right, Ken? Hope so. That's the idea of it, yeah. <laughs> well, 
one of the things that I want to get into this time is, you know, talk about the things that, um, that you do, I want to say for your clients, but to identify who your ideal client is and then really talk about what are some of the special things that people need to be considering that would even uh, kind of open the door for one to be with you. Okay. Well, um, over the years, I've kind of identified who it is that I really serve the best. And a lot of people in the business have sort of put minimum requirements in terms of net worth, income, and so on. I really have found that I don't need to do that. Really, I'm looking for people that meet three sort of characteristics. Um, I want to deal with someone who's friendly um, because it's such a relationship kind of a thing, um, someone who's responsible, and someone who's serious about making the best decisions they can regarding their money. Um, because what we do is a little bit unique in the financial services industry in that we really help people focus on what I call wealth transfers or wealth leakage. And uh, <clears throat> most financial advisors sort of jump in looking at the investment portfolio and basically try to help people make better investments, get greater, greater return, and so on. And, and that's important. It's not that that's not important. But I think I can probably bring more value to people by helping them avoid the losses than I can by getting the best gains. And so getting the maximum bang for the buck is an important thing, but there's a lot of money that most people let slip away from their personal circle of wealth um, inadvertently and unnecessarily. And so that's what we really focus on is trying to help people identify what are you doing that you're not doing as smart as you could and stop it and bring that money back in-house. That, that's a whole <clears throat> training right there, isn't it? I mean, that you're really helping somebody to understand and re, kind of rewire some ways that they do business in the household of business and in the business of business. It's like, um, financially speaking, it's a real rewiring. Sometimes it is. There's a lot of, there are a lot of things that we've sort of been taught to believe that are true. But when you step back and take a bigger look at it, you realize, hey, some of this stuff that we've thought was the right way to do it may not be. Um, the smartest way to go. So one of my favorite questions to ask people is, if something that you thought was true turned out not to be true, when would you want to find that out? <laughs> as early as possible. As early as possible for most people. And yet there are a lot of people, uh, there are a lot of misconceptions that people have regarding money. So um, we, we've kind of identified about 35 different specific things that people can do uh, that people tend to do that aren't necessarily the smartest way to do it. So they break down into five major areas and there's about 35 different specific items. And so a lot of what we do with clients is just walking through what they're doing, pointing out um, are there things that you could be doing perhaps more efficiently, smarter than you are, and help them stop the leakage and bring the money back in house. <laughs> I, I, what, are, what are like the five different, I'll call them buckets just for the, phraseology of it, the five different buckets that you're talking about there? Well, one of them is taxes. I'm not a CPA. I don't do tax return. But there are a lot of things that people can do more efficiently from a tax standpoint. Um, the way they handle their investment portfolio, the way they handle their retirement program, the way they buy all their major stuff, major purchases, things that are kind of budget busters, the way they fund their children's educational expenses. Those are all areas where people can can be inefficient in the use of their money. And so we, again, what we do is really try to help them point out, you know, there may be smarter ways to do what you're trying to do um, and, and quit doing things that send money away, but stop it and bring the money back in-house. But there, isn't that also looking at um, certain things like with college or with, with car purchases or something that a lot of times people will, will put a cash outlay if they have the cash? Uh -huh. uh, or, or they'll, they'll finance the thing. And they don't understand how that hurts them long term. It takes money away from their future nest egg because they're not thinking 30 years out, are they? A lot of times not, yeah. And a lot, one of the things that um, we talk a lot about principles and strategies more than specifics. Um, I like to use golf as a good analogy. Um, because if I said to you, you know, if you want to try to improve your golf game, which do you think is more efficient, to go out and buy a new set of clubs or to take lessons and get your swing straight? And most people recognize it's the swing, it's not the club. And yet a lot of the financial services industry focuses on the clubs or the products. And so that's really what we do is to talk to people about what are you doing that you could be doing smarter, get the swing right, then we'll worry about going to the club rack when it's time to buy the new set of clubs. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a lot of truth in that. For me, all I've ever got out of golf is a blister. So I'm like, uh, well, I don't know if the golf, the club, or the training would do me a whole lot of good. But I know that when it comes to financial stuff, having the right information makes all the difference. Ken's talking about that right now on the Business Spotlight. If you're a business owner, you should be tuning in for a lot of reasons. One, to connect with Ken. Two, hopefully you're learning some things about what you could do to reroute or rewire some of your financial concepts for the future. We've got one more segment here. Be right back. Staying involved uh, in dentistry on every level, local, state, and national, makes me a better dentist. Our patients are our life and our livelihood, and we appreciate every single patient that walks in that door. And these are our family, and we treat them that way. Welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Have a great show. Ken Kendall is my guest today. He's a CFP, CLU in the DFW area. He also is the, at the helm of a group of 4,200 business owners in the Linking Together DFW group on LinkedIn. If you're in the DFW area, you should connect. <laughs> and uh, in fact, that's what this part is about. How can someone connect to you, Ken? There's so many things that you do, so many ways in, that people could benefit as a business owner, as an individual, just by connecting to you. Sure. Well, obviously, they could call me or email me direct. My website address is up there. But the actual name of the group that we've got that we're talking about is Linking Together DFW North Texas, and it is a LinkedIn group. Uh, we also have a separate website. It's just linkingdfw.com. You can find us there. Uh, and either way, it'll get us back to the, to the LinkedIn group. And it's just an overview of the group and 4,300 plus members, all, you know, 95% of them are within about a 15 or 20 mile radius here of Louisville, Flower Mound, Grapevine, South Lake, Irving, Capel kind of area. Um, but it gives us a chance to, to have live meetings because people are pretty local. And so we've got two live events a month, an evening mixer and then a, a lunchtime business workshop kind of a thing. And then there's lots of offline stuff, just people meeting one-on-one -on -one, uh, that aren't any kind of an officially planned sort of a, an event. But just making connections with other people. That's really what the group is so, about. So the first level is to just get inside of your sphere of influence. The second level is, by all means, if they're looking to get some information, if they're in a transition, shouldn't they call you? I mean, and is the 800 number the best number? 800 is fine. I have local number as well, but everybody can get me on the 800 number. And that's 800 342 4698. Right. And then your website is the www.kendallfinancial.net. Now, if they wanted to email you, Ken at kendallfinancial.net. Well, that's really pretty simple. Hard. <laughs> we try to make it simple. I believe me, I'm an Aggie. I need it e Aggie easy. So, okay, so Ken at kendallfinancial.net, or visit you. What now? Don't you do a newsletter as well? I do have a little weekly. We call a weekly economic update, and it's a little e-newsletter that goes out. Just kind of an overview of the markets, what's happened in the, in the uh, financial and in the economy over the last week. Um, news of companies paying, you know, companies expanding, pay dividends, whatever. So it's just uh, takes about two minutes to read it. Comes out every Monday, and anybody could certainly sign up for that. And we'll be glad to put them on the list for that. And, as and well. it's just value. It's really that's not a sales pitch. It's not, not a sales a pitch. It's just hey, good value. Some people can't. Some people get overwhelmed. I've even met financial planners that get overwhelmed with the information that's available in the financial universe. Yeah. There are so many products and so many services and so many things you could do. You're just saying just the easy stuff, right? Yeah, we're just trying to, on this little newsletter, we try to distill it down to the key things that happen. And then there's some fun stuff on there. We have a weekly riddle and we just have a couple little tips and, and so on. So most people... Um, enjoy getting it. You know, somebody can unsubscribe. We're not going to bug them if they don't want to take it. But it's just another way for me to get information out there and for me to make connections with people. If they are re ready to m make a, a more personal touch, call, set an appointment, come in, what? Yeah, they can call. They can uh, call to set up an appointment. They can go on their website and request a, a meeting on their website, and it will, we'll get back in touch with them as far as setting it up. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. And we just encourage people to have a 30 minute or an hour meeting and there's no charge for a meeting. And, and uh, the whole purpose of that, it really is to determine, is there a value in us working together? Can I bring value to what you're looking for? Can I do what you're looking for? Is there a process for bringing somebody on to become a client that you walk through? Well, it, sort of. I mean, it's not a, a real formalized kind of a thing, but the first time is just an initial meeting and find out whether we can have the chemistry to work together and with, to find out is what you need something I'm capable of doing. Right. Because I can't be all things to all people. Um, but if it looks like there's a basis of a relationship and if it looks like there's some things that we can do to help, then we ask people to fill out a pretty simple little two-page two page, um, fact finder kind of a thing. You just tell me a little bit about who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. And then we'll begin to take a look at the specific areas that you're trying to do, whether it's finding some of this transferred money or making the portfolio a little bit more efficient or whatever. Very good. Who should be connecting to you? What, what would you, what would you, who would you say should be contacting you? Well, from, from the business standpoint, um, anybody who thinks that maybe it's time to take a, different, a little different look, get a second opinion on the financial plan. Even if somebody doesn't have any interest in talking about financial stuff, I think they need to join this group because there's probably other people in the group that would be good for them because there's, there's an unbelievable variety of pretty much every occupational group that you can think of. I'll uh, validate this that and say group. absolutely. But what else? The people that are in transition, I think, would be a, a good uh, candidate? Well, yeah, obviously, the last several years, a big one is people who have lost their job for whatever reason. And most people have some sort of a retirement plan, and they don't know what to do with it. Um, but it's pretty clear they got basically four choices in terms of what to do with their retirement plan money. And each of those choices have uh, ramifications and implications. And so part of, part of what we do with a lot of people is just talking about this retirement plan. What do you do with it now, now that you're no longer employed? Um, and so that's, that's very often the start of a relationship, not necessarily always, but a lot of people in the last several years um, certainly has, that's been the, the catalyst. And they should contact you just by going to your website, calling you, or going to the DFW group. Sure. And the name of the DFW group again? Linking Together DFW North Texas. Linking Together DFW North Texas. I will tell you, folks, I'm a, I'm a member of that group. I mean, it was free. Why not? And besides that, looking the, forward at, at who should be a guest on the business spotlight, it should be a business owner that is really trying to have an impact, like Ken, in the DFW area and beyond because of what we do with each show. We're so thankful for Ken being on the show. I encourage you to connect with him, kendallfinancial.net. It's, uh, it's a great day here. I really hope that you'll connect with him and we'll talk to you next time.